Hello everyone and welcome to Robotics and Aerospace Tutorials. In this tutorial we will learn how to manipulate and perform operations with rotation and direction cosine matrices in Python. In particular we will be using this SymPy symbolic Python toolbox. This is a very useful toolbox for performing symbolic computations. In particular, we will learn how to symbolically define rotation matrices in Python. Then, we will learn how to perform symbolic operations on rotation and direction cosine matrices. Then, we will learn how to substitute symbolic values with numerical values such that we can use these matrices as NumPy matrices. And finally, we will learn how to define a function that will return numerical values of symbolic rotation and direction cosine matrices. Over here, I will immediately explain the main motivation for creating this video tutorial. Namely, while modeling rigid bodies, drones, UAVs or robots, you will have to perform operations involving rotation matrices. Over here, we have three rotation matrices, R1, R2 and R3. And these rotation matrices depend on the angles of rotation theta1, theta2, and theta3. If we perform a sequence of Euler rotations, we will have to compute the product of these matrices. It might be very difficult and challenging to accurately compute this product by hand. However, we have Python and we have the symbolic toolbox. And after I evaluated this code, here's my R theta 1, here's R theta 2, and here's R theta 3. I can simply multiply these matrices by using a single line of code. I can type R theta 1 times R theta 2 times R theta 3. And here's the result. Voila, here's the final expression. Super easy. The main motivation for creating this tutorial comes from the fact that you will need programming techniques explained in this video tutorial to develop and simulate dynamics of rigid bodies, UAVs or robots. Also, you will need these techniques to solve inverse and direct kinematics problems in robotics. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 400 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. Consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Also, if you have a question or a comment about the material presented in this lecture, please feel free to ask your question in the comment section below. Thanks. Okay, let's start. In my previous tutorials, I thoroughly explained the concept of rotation matrices. Also, I derived the mathematical expressions for rotation matrices. Over here, you can find a tutorial that explains the rotation matrix around the x-axis. Here is the expression. Then, in this tutorial, you can find the derivation of expression for the rotation matrix around the y-axis. And here's the final expression. Then finally, in this video tutorial, you can find the derivation of the expression for the rotation matrix around the z-axis. And here's the final expression. All these three tutorials, that is, their links are given in the description below this video tutorial. Our first goal is to symbolically define these matrices in Python such that we can perform basic operations on these matrices. Let's do that. Here's my Python environment. As you can see, I'm using Spider. First, let's import the necessary libraries. Over here, I'm importing everything from SymPy library. SymPy library is a very powerful library or better to say toolbox for performing symbolic computations in Python. I'm importing everything, as you can see over here. Then, I'm importing NumPy. 
Then let's run this function from SymPy such that we can nicely print the symbolic expressions. Next, let's define three angles, theta1, theta2, and theta3. These are the two, three actually, sequential rotational angles. Here they are. Let's see. If you type theta1, here it is. It's nicely being printed out. Theta2 and theta3. Perfect. First, let us define the x-axis rotation matrix. This matrix has the following form. Rx of theta1 is equal to 1, 0, 0, this is the first row, then we have 0 cosinus theta1, then we have minus sinus theta1, and in the third row we have 0 sinus theta1 cosinus theta1. Let's define this matrix. Here is how we do that in Python, by using the SymPy toolbox. Basically, we use the same principle as the principle for defining the matrices in NumPy. Here is the first row, then we have comma for the second row, then we define the second row, and over here, again, comma, we define the third row, and that's it. Over here, you should keep in mind that these cosinuses and sinuses are actually imported over here. That is, they are not NumPy sinuses and cosinuses, they are symbolic functions. And keep in mind that. This is very important. Next, let's define the y-axis and z-axis rotation matrices. Next, let's define the rotation matrices around y and z-axis. Here is the rotation matrix around the y-axis, and here is the rotation matrix around the z-axis. By using the same principle, we can define these matrices. So this is the Ry matrix. Cosinus theta, 0, sinus theta, 2, 0, 1, 0, minus sinus theta, 2, 0, cosinus theta, 2. And over here is the rotation matrix around the z-axis. And that's it. Simple as that. Next. Let's evaluate our code and let's see the results over here in the workspace. Let's type r theta1 and let's see the output. Here it is. Beautiful. It looks very nice. This is because we call this function init print. Let's see this matrix, perfect, and let's see this matrix, perfect. Maybe somewhere over here, while defining the matrices, we made an error. It's a good practice to double check the definition of these matrices. And we can do that by validating a very basic property of these matrices, that is, we will validate the orthogonality. Namely, rotation matrices should be orthogonal. This means that the inverse of the rotation matrix should be equal to its transpose. And consequently, we can verify our matrix by simply computing a R transpose times R. And we should obtain identity matrix. That is, if we properly define our matrix R, then this relation should hold. Let's verify that. So what I'm doing over here, I'm simply taking R theta 1, I'm transposing it, and I multiply the result by R theta 1. Let's see the result. Here it is. It's the identity matrix. Second rotation matrix perfect, and the third rotation matrix, perfect. So indeed, we have properly defined our rotation matrices. 
Next, let's perform operations on rotation matrices. Over here, I will compute the so-called direction cosine matrix. And the direction cosine matrix is simply a product of R1 with R2 and with R3. The direction cosine matrix is very important. It's used to define a sequence of three rotations. I created a separate video tutorial that explains the direction cosine matrices and this tutorial is given in the description below this video. So let's do that. Let's multiply R1 with R2 and R3 and now you will see the power of the symbolic toolbox. We can simply say M is equal to R1 and we should be careful over here. It's actually R theta 1 times r theta 2 and times r theta 3. And let's see the result. Here it is. Let's type it and let's see it. Perfect. You can see it over here. It's a relatively complex expression and it will probably take you 10 or 15 minutes to manually multiply these matrices. And here you can already see the power of this toolbox. It's a really amazing toolbox and it can significantly speed up the modeling process. Next, let's double check the orthogonality of the matrix M since the direction cosine matrices also have to be orthogonal. We can do it in two ways. First of all, we can simply compute M transpose M and let's see the result. Here it is. It's obviously an identity matrix, which means that M is accurately computed and M is actually the orthogonal matrix. Also, we can do this. We can simply compute M transpose times M and then we can simply type minus identity matrix and the result should be zero. Perfect. Okay, now we have symbolic expressions. That is, we have M, we have R theta 1, R theta 2 and R theta 3. However, we need numerical values. That is, we need to learn how to substitute theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3 in these matrices and to obtain NumPy matrices. Let's see how to do that. Over here is the code. First, I will define three angles, theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. And notice over here that the angles need to be in the radians. Be careful about that. When you for example, use sinus function, for example, n pi sinus, and you type, for example, 30, this 30 over here is actually not 30 in degrees, it's in radians. You need to convert degrees to radians. Keep in mind that. Over here, after defining theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3, let's define here an evaluation. That is, I'm going to call this method evaluate f, which stands for evaluate function. I specify that theta 1 should be equal to theta 1 value, theta 2 should be equal to theta 2 value, and theta 3 should be equal to theta 3 value. And let's see the result. Let's see m1. Here it is. However, you can see over here that this is not... A NumPy array. To do that, that is to convert this matrix to NumPy array, we need to execute this code line. And let's see now the result. Perfect. Here's our NumPy array. And let's double check the result by verifying the orthogonality property. Perfect. Identity matrix. This, this was the first approach for evaluating the numerical values. However, there is a more elegant approach. The second approach is based on lambda function. The SymPy toolbox has a very nice function called lambdify. We simply call lambdify, we specify the symbols theta1, theta2, and theta3, and we specify the matrix. So the interpretation of this argument over here is that when we call, for example, m function, we will specify these three arguments, theta1, theta2, and theta3. Then, what will happen behind the scenes? 
Python will simply substitute these arguments over here and it will return the matrix with substituted and computed values. So let's do that. Here's our, here's our m function. Let's see the m function. Here it is. And let's simply evaluate. That is, let's call this function. And here it is. This function immediately returns NumPy array. And that's it. Simple as that. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.